Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're gonna have some fun with Site Inspector. <clears throat> so, a little bit about Site Inspector. Um, I found this and I was like, oh my god, this is exactly what I would need if I ever decided to create a blog or anything else. Um, because Site Inspector actually does a pretty cool um, job in just like scanning the website, finding broken links, um, fixing spelling it, or noting your spelling errors or like gram court errors. So like, <clears throat> If English isn't your first language, or if it is, and you're just like, yeah, I don't, you know, write for a living and, you know, check all my grammar and spelling all the time, um, this might be really good for you just to kind of use for your own blog or your own site, um, so that it seems a little bit more professional, knowing that there isn't random um, mistakes, so... <clears throat> Or you could hire an intern and be like, hey, go read read all the things that I posted something and um, let me know if I did something wrong and, you know, have that intern spend all that time. But you can use this instead. So let's get started, have some fun, um, and see where we go with it. <clears throat> all right. So first thing we'll do is set up um, the DNS for this so that we can... Uh, essentially use all of our automated stuff to create the VM that we need um, for the back end of this. So the first thing we'll do is update our hosted zone to include a new IP for this. And we're gonna just call it a site inspector. And we'll do 90, we'll just increment it by one here. And we will add this, add a site inspector. And then we will need to add this to our Ansible inventory as well. Um, Ansible is a very nice tool to use to kind of automate your build processes and stuff like that. Um, so if you haven't used Ansible before, um, feel free to check out all my Ansible videos in my self-hosted uh, home lab series playlist. So site inspector. And everything that I'm doing here and all the back end stuff for this um, is in my actual automation series for the most of it. Um, some of it's been part of in my home lab series. I didn't do a very good job as I kind of just try to throw out videos. So um, some of it might overlap a little bit, but if you're looking for how all this is automated, um, go check out my automation series. It's pretty fun actually. And then we'll log into our AWX box here real quick. And we will run our create VM patching, install Docker, add certs, and set up Nginx. So what we'll do is call the site inspector. We had that IP that we added in DNS. And we'll just add a name for this. And then we need the proxy for this. So <clears throat> what we'll do, um, site inspector. Um, let's actually go to the GitHub because that's where the Docker Compose file is, I believe. Docker Compose. So, by default, it'll be listening on 88, 808. Um, so, we'll just use that. I could obviously change that to be like 8080 or 8000 or, or something else, but um, I like to just use the default just to kind of show you guys what it would be. <clears throat> so, we'll, we'll do this. We'll launch this. This will essentially go through, you know, each step of the thing. So this is what my automation series will cover all these steps here. Um, so if you want more in detail, go check out those videos. Um, but from here, we're just going to let this run. It'll take a few minutes. I'm going to fast forward the video. And by fast forward, I'm going to just skip to when this is done. And then we'll continue configuring our thing here. So we'll see you here in a little bit. All right. So it has finished installing. Everything's set up. So we should be able to now... <coughs> Login site in this vector via SSH. And there we go. So we can see that, you know, Docker's installed. We got um, Nginx installed. So we can cat, you know, the Nginx configuration. You can see that we have it um, for port eight, 808. <laughs> that is a really weird port. Um, so what we'll do is we will go to site inspector real quick. So we can go here and they actually have a one line of command that will essentially download the Docker Compose and everything. So I'm actually gonna go to the, the Docker 
here, which well, I'll, I'll actually manually do it here um, to, to grab it because I want to show you guys. <coughs> you, can, you can use this one liner, but it's it, this is essentially what it does here, down here. So um, we'll need to make sure wget is installed. <coughs> Boop. And then we'll get the doc composed. Okay, so we can see the doc compose. Um, it has, you know, 808. We'll look through and see here real quick. Um, there is a secret key base um, that looks empty. We should populate that. Um, I think this is just a, just like random character type situation. So um, I'm just gonna generate some random characters on the side and we'll just paste that in there. <clears throat> um, but I think everything else you can leave as default if you wanted to. I think obviously you should upgrade your Postgres password, so it's not Postgres, but um, I think other than that, you should be able to just use this. So what we can do here is do docker compose up, detach, and we're going to follow the logs here. Doc compose um, logs and follow <laughs> so that we can just see it run here. Okay, so it looks like it's running and it's listening here. So what we should be able to do now is go to our site, site in inspector.dragon.local. <clears throat> we'll set up our first um, user for this. And <coughs> there we go. So. That is how you essentially set it up. We're gonna scan a website, and I think I'm gonna just use the one that they have in like the screenshot here. Um, Blog.archive.org. I think that was yeah, that was that was the one up here. Blog.archive.org. So um, there's a few things you can do. <clears throat> we'll type in the address, and this could be whatever URL that you have. This could be your obviously like self-hosted stuff, but you could check. Um, spelling grammar, links, images, and scripts. So by default, it'll check spelling grammar and links. Um, you can set a specific path or path to exclude, um, but I'm gonna leave everything as default in this specific case. Um, but if you wanted to check more, you can. So we'll hit scan website. <coughs> uh, I'm not gonna subscribe because I didn't set up any of the email stuff, but you can see here, it will start scanning. <coughs> And essentially, once it finds stuff, it will start appearing here. So you can see, so far with the scan, found five spelling errors, five grammatical errors, and one broken link. <coughs> you can also do custom checks, um, which I haven't played around with, but um, you might be able to, if something contains certain things or whatnot. So um, you can add some custom checks, but I'll show you here. You can see if I were to click on this, we can see that there is <coughs> Um, suggestions based off of um, what what it seems, right? So first thing you can see, um, these are just, you know, common spelling stuff. So Sam, seem, wong, wrong, <coughs> websites should be websites for grammatical. Um, and it'll tell you, you know, each page where the text is coming from, from that page. So you can, you can obviously kind of be like, oh yeah, that's, that's how it should be. Um, and then there's broken links and stuff like that, that you can see like this wasn't found based off of this link um, or whatnot. So it's a pretty easy way to just kind of easily go through, check to see, you know, if you have any uh, spelling or grammar code errors or broken links in your site very quickly. Um, and you can, you know, run this as many times as you want. So when you do a release um, or your staging site, you can easily just run this and it will scan. Um, so easy way to kind of just check to make sure you're doing um, everything right. So uh, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Happy holidays. Hope everyone has a great time so far. So we'll see you guys later. Bye.